A video series about atmospherics. Hmm, where to start? You can see here that your spacesuit's oxygen canister is ticking down while the waste tank is ticking up. And you shouldn't pay too much attention to the name uh, because it can be named anything. What matters is what the tablet shows you. Pure oxygen and the temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius. That's fine. Oxygen low. Low pressure. Oh yeah, oxygen and you need it. Critical. You need it in your spacesuit. <laughs> you inhale oxygen, you exhale CO2, which will be removed from your suit via these filters, and then it will be pumped into your waste tank. Which you can see here. If you turn off your filters, yes, now they are off because the button says when you click here, something will become on, then no more CO2 will be removed from your suit and so it will slowly build up. Eventually the pressure here, over here, 86 kilopascals, will have increased to the maximum that is currently Oxygen low. set and um, then Oxygen critical. no more air will be pumped into your suit and then you will begin to suffocate. The solution of course is to turn the filters back on. There's an alternative. Let's flush the suit, which wastes a lot of oxygen, but it gets the job done. Whatever's in your suit that your filters can't remove, maybe because they're turned off, or maybe it's possibly nitrogen, um, can be removed by flushing. Have you seen? What a waste. What a waste. But now we're fine again. For the moment. Turning your air off, yes, now it's off, uh, should be a bit more obvious of a problem because now you're just removing all the oxygen that's still in your suit. Oxygen low. Yeah. Oxygen critical. That was quick. Low pressure. By the way, why is there some oxygen in your waste canister? How does that make sense? Well, it comes from your climate, from your AC. Uh, it tries to use the oxygen to regulate your temperature also. So, just in case you were wondering why your oxygen is ticking down so quickly with the wrong suit on a hot planet, that's why. Temperature high. Yeah, that's what in your, it's in your waste tank. Over 100 degrees Celsius, currently rising because of the surrounding environment, but mostly that came from our breathing. And most of it is oxygen. So, yeah. So, now you know the general mechanics of your spacesuit and your oxygen, and that you need oxygen. And now you will be asking yourself, how do you get oxygen when it's gone? If you're thinking of your lander's oxygen tank, that's the right thought. But to use it, you first have to unfasten it with a wrench. Now you have various click points. For example, here, <laughs> insert wrench, no. A slot for your oxygen tank. Air tank critical. Ah, that's better. By the way, instead of unfastening everything manually with a wrench, you can just destroy the lander. No one needs it anymore, it's just decorative. Once you've built your little starter box, you will wonder how to get some atmosphere in there. Could just use the oxygen, oxygen tank, right? I mean, it has so many click points. One of them is the valve. The value that you set here is the target pressure that it will try to achieve. But this is not the way to go. This is very, very wasteful. Even with a room as small as this one, it barely got the job done. I mean, we still have some oxygen, but look at that. And what if we want to top up our tank now? 7 megapascals? Air tank critical. Now it's less even. Yes, we can open the helmet. You can breathe just fine. And suddenly there's CO2 in here. Um, there should be CO2 in here. Yeah, took a while. There it is. You should not use the oxygen tank because it's the easiest way to refill your air tank. And you can do that many times before it has been depleted this much. By the way, when you are in a breathable environment, you might want to turn off your filter and AC and such, because your suit will still be using some of your oxygen, depending on what it thinks about the environment, for example, the temperature. It's not much right now, but it's still happening. Now they're off. So, there are better ways to get oxygen into your station uh, than wasting your oxygen tank. Particularly since refilling your oxygen tank isn't an easy task. If you want pure oxygen, which you should try to get, because whatever is not pure about your oxygen canister, 
you will have to use a filter for or have to flush all the time which wastes your air tank. These are the parts you need. The portables connector, the filtration unit from the um, atmospherics kit, pipes, a passive vent to allow the filtration to suck from your room, and another one to allow the filtration to waste, to vent whatever it doesn't pump into your uh, canister, into your tank. The tank itself, of course, wrenched up, now it's firmly connected. Connected like this, this has Hydration critical. the side effect that the oxygen of the tank will now be in this pipe, because now the tank is just open to the pipe network. Keep that in mind, if the pipe may be polluted with something. This one's pure, it was evacuated. Only oxygen in there. You need an O2 filter. And you need cables. And finally you need patience. Because without an active vent pumping the gas into the filtration unit, it will take a lot of time. But make no mistake, the filtration unit is a powerful pump. Eventually the oxygen tank will explode. Its maximum capacity is 10 megapascals. And there's another problem. As your tank fills with the pure oxygen filtered here from the room's air, the room's air loses more and more oxygen. But the key question from the beginning was how do you get oxygen into the air? The answer is oxide that you can find on the moon and uh, other celestial bodies easily. But it doesn't have only oxygen, it also has nitrogen. That is why if you somehow fill your spacesuit's canister from this stuff, then you will also need a nitrogen filter. Anyway, let's see what this does. It cools down the room. We have seen it was already at 30 degrees from the sun, sun shining in through the windows, heating up every grid here, uh, where, uh, well, heating every grid that it was hitting. Some more, maybe? See, we can already breathe fine. You shouldn't toss down too much. It's best if you live on the edge uh, of uh, the temperature being maybe a bit hot, because then you still have the chance to cool it down. I mean, low pressure, maybe high temperature, and then you can toss it down if need be. But if you already have saturated high temperature, uh, high pressure, then uh, you cannot use this trick to cool down, because your starting gear's walls have a pressure differential capacity of 200 kilopascals. This means, if the pressure in here would reach 200 kilopascals, where well out there we have a vacuum, that would be that differential. But if out there we have like 100 kilopascals, in here you reach 250, you're still fine, though you're kind of living on the edge. Yes, it's about the differential. Anyway, what's the tank doing? Okay, pure oxygen. Nice temperature, always keep the temperature in mind. That's really something to consider. Here on Europa, with a minus 140 degrees during the day, minus 150 during the night, I believe, our lander's oxygen tank, which is of the simple kind, still like on the moon, so it's not insu uh, insulated, uh, it will de decrease in temperature. It started at 20, now we're already at 19.8. So let's just wait for a moment. 19.7, 19.6, you can see here it's conv convecting its heat away, this means uh, transfer of thermal energy by touch, so to speak, and, uh, well, it's also receiving a little bit of heat via radiation, that's indicated by the negative number, so it's losing negative thermal energy, but it's only a little bit. Ultimately, it's cooling down. 19.6, and if you're at minus temperatures and you fill up your um, suit's canister, you will have minus temperatures that you're breathing. Your lungs will get damaged. Then down here you will see the red cross showing up of your health. It might still show 100%, but if it's showing that means you have some kind of damage and the only thing implemented so far other than uh, your, just your health score is um, your lung. There will be more organs later, there will actually be surgery, but currently uh, there's only the lungs and if they have taken damage then your health will show up as 100% here constantly. Your lungs will heal slowly, I believe, but anyway, don't damage them. So, what does lung damage look like? Temperature critical. Here. 
And soon the lungs will actually be damaged. We will see that up here, I think. I wonder why it takes so long. Oxygen low. Ah, yellow. Oxygen critical. Red. Okay, we closed the helmet. Now we're fine again, aren't we? No, the lungs are now damaged. And they might be so badly damaged that we will soon lose consciousness because there's just not enough oxygen intake into our body. Yep, that is simulated. This is stationers. Uh, what you can do is you can swallow the one pill medical that you have. Uh, okay. Temperature critical. Ah, the lungs are most, mostly healed. I mean, mostly. See, that's what you can do. That's a lot of little things tossed at you at once, right? But it's ultimately not that hard. Try to breathe enough oxygen uh, and no pollutant and stuff. Well, we haven't, we hadn't that yet. Uh, we didn't, didn't have that yet. So, um, but uh, and make sure that the temperature is all right. From zero to fifty degrees is fine. Just keep it around twenty, maybe. You should always be careful where you click, particularly when you're holding a tool like this. Bop! A hole in the station. Soon we can no longer breathe. Low pressure. And what do you do Oxygen then? Low. Press I to close the helmet or click here. It's the same Oxygen effect. Critical. But then, soon, the panic will set in. Oxygen critical. Because we forgot to turn the suit back on. <sighs> so let's say you did it right. You built your first starter box and now you're saying, well, I'm going to toss down some oxide. Yep. Because then I will get some nitrogen in the station. But that's not a problem. It's not a pollutant. It's not a poison. I will not have the spacesuit problem with the volume and such. I can just breathe freely. Yep. I will do that. And then this stuff just doesn't melt. What's going on there? Well, you can see here pressure not available and temperature not available. What does that mean? Is the pressure too low to measure the temperature? No, it means there is no temperature. Because contrary to what Hollywood keeps telling you that you freeze to an ice popsicle instantly when, you, when you're exiting the airlock, you don't. Only your nostrils and your, where, where you're wet, basically, uh, you will freeze due to um, sublimation and so forth. Is it sublimation? It's the opposite, right? Anyway, um, the low pressure and so forth. Let's not go into that. Um, but um, currently there's just not any atmosphere to melt this stuff. And what happened earlier? The sun was shining in. The sun was warming this up. And so it melted in the sunlight. Now we don't have sun. What if you don't have the luxury of waiting? Then we open the waste canister. Oh, that wasn't enough? Interesting. Well, we still have the well done. Maybe that helps. But the ice is still not melting, because the pressure in here is still too low. Well, then it can make sense to use a little bit of trigger gas here from our oxygen tank. Ah, it's starting to melt. Okay, that's enough. Now it has. Now it can give itself enough gas to fill up the room enough, so that there will be enough gas, so that there's enough temperature, so that it can melt. It's a bit weird, but that's the way it is. Is there still a hole here? No, it's the animation is just so weird always overshoots the walls. Don't be irritated by that. But uh, if you want to make sure that your walls are closed up properly, use the crowbar trick. Just look what's highlighted. Just make sure you don't drop too many of these. Uh, so you're going to have a problem. 200 kilopascals, remember? Now listen. Well, 
but I don't know why there is no damage sound. But anyway, the walls are taking damage, 28%, 29%, and eventually they'll blow out. And not only would you have to repair the station, but if you don't catch that in, in time, then you will be in big trouble. <laughs> Similarly, you must take care not to overpressurize your tanks or canisters. Or else. Ah. Cognition critical. Health critical. Just look at this crater. Temperature critical. So again, while the tank is being refilled from the filtration unit, uh, the ratio of oxygen is going down. And overall, of course, also the, uh, the amount of gas. The amount of nitrogen stays the same, the amount of CO2 stays the same, because all of that is sucked in here, ignored here, and pumped out here again. So that's why the ratio shifts. Eventually you will have enough pressure here to breathe, but not enough oxygen. You have to keep that in mind. Whoa, close one. Well. At least we're safe. We're below 10 megapascals. Not a problem, right? Uh, well, if it's very hot around, then this heat will get into the tank. I mean, I overdid it a bit for demonstration purposes, but anyway. Then we reach 10 megapascals, and then shortly after, boom. That can also happen. Oh, it keeps heating up, and eventually it explodes. Still heating up. Much later. Okay. See, would you have spotted it? I mean, you're standing here in the corner, drinking a coffee, and then your heart stops. Just because it got warmer. Another important thing about your spacesuit, the waste tank cannot fill up to the capacity of these canisters of 10 megapascals. At 4 dot something, 4.1 megapascals, it will just stop. The spacesuit can no longer fill it up further. And this means that your entire filtration system is basically offline. You will be warned, waste tank critical, but what you have to do then, you have to swap it out with a different one or just open it. Ideally, keep the gases around, but you know, this is better than suffocating. You might think it would make sense to use a smart canister then, which can withstand up to 20 megapascals instead of only 10. But you have to consider that the smart canister has 64 liters capacity. Just like the normal canister, same capacity. So this means if you fill it with a certain amount of gas, it will have the same pressure inside. So if pressure is the limiting factor, like it is in the case of your spacesuit and your waste canister, then a smart canister will not help you at all. But of course using the smart canister as your breathing tank is meaningful because he, then you can run around much longer with the same tank. It's cool that they have this little progress bar here, right? Which has three or four steps only. It doesn't have a step for every little square grid here. So you can see how full it is. That's particularly fun when, when it's overfilled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what happens if a pipe is overfilled. Pipe have a maximum pressure. Ah, let's go into that into the next in the next um, tutorial. For now, let's just die. Until next time. Cognition critical. Health critical.